Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi Dave, look at you, summer fun. Thank you. I've got my workout shorts here. I bought new like fancy ones. It's always to motivate myself and reward myself. I, I excuse it in my mind. Okay. Understood, understood. Yes, I'm always like, okay, you've been good and you should get a workout mm -hmm. outfit that you would like to wear to inspire yourself to keep working out. Because of course, if you want to wear it, you have to keep working out to like fit in it appropriately. Anyway, this is the skating lesson. Welcome, please subscribe below. We don't need to talk about my excuses for shopping, but it's all Although I do own yoga pants that I use for pajamas, so. But do fun. you like how you look in them and know that you need to keep doing yoga or keep doing other things to make the legs look good in the pants? Oh, Dave, I buy them way oversized, so I always feel skinny and comfy. Doesn't work, doesn't work. <laughs> We have so much to teach you. Okay. Exactly. I have much to learn, much to learn. It's the oh. lesson part of the skating lesson. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. How are you? How was your week? What's going on? It was just really, really lovely. I lost okay. my cell phone, but I'm using my iPad like a giant cell phone in the interim. Good. So okay. There you go. And I'm now, just to address an issue, I am in Montauk, but just for the record, I'm always wearing a mask. I am always Jonathan. six feet apart. You were everybody. I know, but like, I follow every guideline. Jonathan, follow they're on to you. You're on the train. You know, I was hearing guys in the news being like, oh, I was filming, because um, I'm producing a show for work, and we were talking to a doctor, and he was like, you know, I wouldn't get on any trains and planes. And I was like, Jonathan Byer, anyone? Anyone? Yeah, exactly. But I'll tell you, on Amtrak, when it's like, nobody on there, you wear your mask, and you have your hand sanitized. So I'm following every regulation. Okay. Um, All right. So you know saying. what? I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, we're saying too. Anyway. Okay. What's going on? You know, we've got lots of things happen. You're in Montauk, very, mm -hmm. mm. she, it's she. Nice. It's nice, yeah. You know what, Jonathan, but you're a mix and people don't know this about you because you like to, being in the opera, you like to present yourself as being in Montauk. Oh yeah. But you were also at Six Flags with the gutter rats, okay? <laughs> it's true, that is a different crowd. You a different are a mix, crowd. Jonathan. Yeah, you... I think I'm a Libra, so I think it's important to have balance. Mm. Mm -hmm. You balance it out. For as much high-end she-she things as we, you really, you hit that. I keep it real in other ways. Yeah. Yes, you do. And I went on El Toro, and on one of the big things, they tell you not to have your cell phone. My cell phone just flew right out of the car. So It's in an iPhone that's like a grand right there, you know? But I had insurance. I didn't even know I had insurance. Oh, that's good. So that helps. Assurian mm -hmm. or whatever you have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where they try to make it impossible for you to make a claim. But I found a way. Of course. <laughs> you know, it's better to lose it. I feel like if you have water damage, they judge you the most on a cell phone. Oh, yeah. That is like, you have water damage. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping it in a toilet. How many people have dropped it in a toilet? It's so I haven't dropped my... Back in college, are you kidding? At the end of a night when maybe like... Your roommate is either sleeping or getting to know someone and you're like talking on the phone and like the bathroom at the end of the day. Do you know how many times I dropped the cell phone like in the toilet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And did the rice ever work? Because you know no. Because you know that it seemed like really important to have that conversation at one AM. You know, of like course, it just seems of course. Because you're a good friend. You're a good friend, you're having emotions, or maybe they're being a good yeah. friend to you and you're upset. Yeah. All things. Okay. On call at all times. Yes. Important. Anyway. In that period. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, it's been a little bit of a transitional week. I have to tell you, I was so exhausted from producing the show. We were like running full sprint towards getting everything done on Thursday. Friday, I couldn't even like recover. I did skate, but it was a little missy. It was very good that Galena was away this week. She was visiting her other daughter in um, Connecticut. So I, I actually got help on my backspin from Yulia Lausua because I was like, okay, I need... I want Galena to be like, oh, the backspin, so good boy, good boy, you know, when she comes back. So, <laughs> yeah. but I realized that she always like says good boy. And I'm like, I bet she says that to her dog too. I'm yeah. just noticing, I'm just noticing a trend. And you're learning tricks. So Apparently, he's a very smart dog. His name is Oscar. His nickname or home name as she calls it is Osha. Okay. He's a Russian French bulldog. Okay. Very okay. smart. Okay. Understands everything. <laughs> Okay. Amazing. <laughs> you know, he had only been spoken to in English before, but he just, he just. Isn't it amazing how the dogs just know all those languages? So yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so yeah. And I'm actually working with my old coach, Natasha, because I'm like, okay, Galena would like me to not look disabled. That's what I told Kristen Frazier the other day. I'm like, that's the goal. That's, 
Yeah. That's the goal on some of these moves. So we just need to like relax, you know. Because like Kristen Fraser is like very good at giving you like technique and like left arm, right arm. She's not going to give you any warmth. So we'll go to the old Russian lady for some of that build me up and then we can get to yeah. round it out. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. This is you have to like put your team together in your head. You got to like do it. Well, but and you're at a place where like you're the board of your own. You're the CEO of your own board. Right? Raphael always said like, American skaters make themselves. You know, like you have it's to. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Take okay. ownership. Leadership, Dave. We're doing it. All right. So. It kind of felt fun watching skating competitions again. It did. They were small and, you know, they were the Russian junior test skates that everyone acted so excited about. It was the dance in the pants. <laughs> We're gonna wait, we're gonna wait. And Terry's daughter had a broken foot, leg, she wasn't even there. Come on, I'm, next week. Yeah, Tell exactly. me what it's important, okay? <laughs> Please, all right? These people, oh my God, the biggest drama this week is that Camila Valieva is gonna be at the senior test gates. And my reaction, good. She should I'm, be. Or oh, as they translated it, and it's appropriate. And it's appropriate. They're, yeah. That YouTube channel is hysterical, but. Jonathan, I think you're getting COVID. You're blowing your nose on the air. You're traveling. No, I'm not. You know what it is? I did a sinus rinse when I showered. And so I'm just trying not to be gross. <laughs> Jonathan, okay. So Valieva's gonna be at the senior test gates. And when I saw the makeup, that makes sense. Cause she's gonna be a senior at Russian nationals this year. They always allow people to skate up. And I think it's appropriate because they're preparing her for the Olympics. It is very clear that she is the Olympic hope. They're trying to say that, oh, it's so Terry has more skaters. That too, but I bet they were going to try to pull this anyway when true is. So yeah. I yeah. bet when, because what they're going to do is they're going to prepare her as one of Terry's main Olympic hopes. So I think they're just starting this now. Which I believe she is. Of course 100%. she is. Yeah, yes. 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows why Sasha left? Sasha probably left for a lot of reasons. You know, she's coming up behind her. There are other people. Your number is always. Yeah. Here. No one cares if you just can land quads on a stiff leg. Like, she needs to look to the future, okay? Uh, it's true. It's true. Because she was on the cutting block. Yeah. I mean, because Valieva's going to get PCS through the roof. Yes, that's why they're giving her that bolero with all the leg kicks. Because they want to be like, this is a girl who is... You can already pick the Russian commentary now from Julin, from Averbuk, from, uh, well, it depends if Tarasova likes her when she's commentating. Uh, she probably does, but if- I would think she too. does. It depends yeah. what the politics are of that situation. But they'll be like, oh, beautiful, modern girl doing such a wonderful program. You know, it's classical, but it's modern movement and this and that and oh, you know, they're just going to like yeah. BS you. It's the same. Because with Zagitova, she was very juniorish, so they just put her in a tutu, and they were like, "Oh, it is like ballet on ice." Transformation, like, yeah, exactly. Like she was Oksana Bayul or something, like really giving you ballet, please. Exactly. Okay? Not true. Not true at all. Also, we learned that Zagitova, you know, she was just when they took that picture, she was just sick, you know, when right, Terry right, was right. Of course. Yeah. And now she's going to the university for journalism, so. which was interesting as I was reading about it. It's like a state-sponsored journalism school. It, it's, it's like one lost in translation. It's one of okay. But she is going to a real school. It's not one where you buy a diploma if you're okay. a sports personality. The interesting thing, there are a couple interesting things about this. She's never been good at interviews. Like the Russians always kind of are a little shady about it. Like they'll be like such a beautiful, sweet, nice girl. She's shy. But then others will be like, she can't talk. And like they're, what, right? What, which is it? Cause she, she kind of said it too. Yeah. She kind of said it too, that she's so shy. So look, she's a beautiful girl. She doesn't have to, she doesn't seem like the coaching personality type. I think she's going to be a TV presenter. So okay. she needs to work on her skills. I think it makes perfect sense. Keep the gorgeous face, be a TV presenter. Maybe you could like, I don't know. She seems about as talented as that real estate show that's like at a time by on Saturday mornings on NBC, where they look at all the fancy houses, something New York. Oh, um, okay. Oh, like oh, buying New York or selling New York? Or whatever whatever it is. You know, okay. it's like they, okay. they would, it's always on NBC and they take you through in between, okay. like before Meet the Press or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I think she would be great at that. 
you know, showing some fancy. When with age, maybe that confidence comes and being out of a competitive arena where you're constantly put down. Like yes, maybe, she'll be great. Maybe she'll come into her own. Yeah. I mean, she hasn't had a lot of time for studying. That is the other rude thing. They posted her test scores. And they posted Terz and Baeva's. They took, I guess it's like the Russian college. I'm not saying it's the Russian SATs, but it's an exam, an entrance exam of sorts. She did not get what would be considered a passing score, but with her personality and her name, get through. Her pedigree. But I'm sure all the Russian fans will tell us she's a scholar. You know, she was sick, so she didn't get to study that week for the exam. Of course, of course. Terza Beyeva got like being a concert pianist again. (laughs) Terza Beyeva got an 88 and a 90. So I think she will also no longer really be skating. It's good that these girls are preparing for the future. Okay, let's... They're realistic. I think that's great. So I think it's good. I'm supportive of it. Is someone in the shower, like, shaving? Like, what is Ludwig doing, Jonathan? There's, like, a little bit of a sound at the background that I'm hearing. But it's okay. We will just... Oh, I'm so sorry, Dave. It's okay. You know, it's the... breeze of the ocean? Maybe the breeze of Montauk. Yes. So... Anyway, she's yeah, that 88 in the now. So Terza and and I think they're both going to different schools, but she's studying journalism. And I think that that's great. A bit ironic. Even in the translation there, like she can, res- she can promote cultural things of Russia. So I'm like, oh, you want her to be a, a tool of propaganda? <laughs> this is wonderful, okay? Yeah, exactly. And you can get a degree in it. Also okay. a nice, nice touch. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, we can, listen, in America, <laughs> Listen, they become like morning show hosts, you know? Yeah, communications major. I always thought Tanith would have been a great Erin Andrews in the side of football games and Good Morning America host. I thought she had the Instead right... Of, well, she's doing her lane. Don't you think Good Morning America would be better for Tanith? Come on. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. I think she's fun. She could dance with them. She could do whatever. She's got a sweet personality. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we'll see. Like Medvedeva seems to have a coaching personality to me. She's I think so too. And as we sort of like were talking about that yesterday, I think there's like something really to it. Yeah. Or yesterday, the last week. I think there's something really to all of the information she's collecting. She seems in the sport, a student of the sport. Whereas Zikitiva did not. So I have been very upset this past week because I wanted to read Corey Rochenkov's book, right? But you had you, this is what happens when we live in an instant economy, right? Because I have an expectation and zero patience, right? I would like something now, okay? Yeah. I want it now, okay? It finally came in the mail, all right, yes. But how come, and I don't understand, and I know it's not something to do with the rights and everything, there is a British ebook version of it, and there is a, um, like a, there's an ebook and an audible, like an audiobook of it, right? That you can get in other countries, but not in the US. I tried a VPN. I tried to have people who live there, but if you don't have the right credit card, you can't get it on Amazon UK, but then they can still see, even with the VPN somehow, that I was like in the US, or maybe it's because I don't have a British Amazon account because I don't have like a dummy. So I couldn't read the book when I wanted to read the book. You know, it was- How weird is that? Are they gonna release a- so I got it because you could only buy it on hardcover. And it was like, yeah. and the the date was like three weeks away. It came in a week. Okay. That was okay. okay. Sometimes those Amazon things, they build it in. It's not like when you buy something on Facebook and you think that you're going to get like, have a very fashionable summer. And I'm still waiting two and a half months because it's coming from China, even though it said that it was coming there. Who knows if it's even going to be the right stuff in the box. If you've ever bought things off of Facebook. My mom bought this jigsaw puzzle. She was so excited. Came totally different puzzle. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Because, you know, my dad started doing puzzles. So then all of a sudden all puzzle ads started to show up on her face. Oh, it's terrible how much they list. And again, for me, it's that microphone thing. I could literally say like, William Sonoma. And suddenly now my Instagram feed is all William Sonoma ads, cooking ads, like all this sort of stuff. It's so horrifying. They even started to learn like what style clothes I liked, like what I would Mm -hmm. go for. Right, Mm -hmm. terrible. It's horrifying, it's horrifying. The Rudchenko book is really humorous and amazing so far. Well, they did an article about him recently. So that makes sense that it was probably, and it was on like NPR or something like that. And he's full-blown in witness protection. Like, I mean, yeah. the gravitas of that, like, there was something cheeky about him in Icarus. Like, he was kind of this, like, cutesy character. Even oh, I find him about, very endearing. 
Yeah, even though he's talking about such serious stuff, but the idea that like he's literally being hunted. So I, what I find amazing about him is that people are gonna read this book and if you're from a US sensibility and someone who reads it, you're gonna want him to say doping is awful, it's harmful, it's horrific, don't do it. He has like a different view. He says that he, he views the world like very George Orwell or Orwellian where there's truth, there is untruth, you have to remember the truth to become, so you don't go crazy, right? And what he's saying is that there's like, Wada has so much example of doping being in right in front of them, but they don't act on it until right. later and they're always behind the eight ball and that people are always cheating in a different, just like in a new way. And like, it's like a game, right? And it's mm. um, different ways around it. And, and he's like, I'm not here to apologize. What? Okay, so he says, what follows is not an attempt to make excuses for my actions nor to justify them. It strives to be one thing above all, honest. I will not show away from giving a full and candid account of what I did and nor do I ask you to forgive me. It's like very interesting. Like I kind of. It's no nonsense actually. Like I'm not in some of the articles, sugarcoat it. Yeah. He was like, well, has doping really killed people? And then, then he spins it in the best way. And he's like, well, if we didn't have doping, you would just have unfair competitive advantage due to athletic ability. And some people have more ability than others. And I was like. Right, that's you're like a the lawyer. point. That is yeah. mine. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. But Whatever helps you sleep book. at night. Oh yeah. my God, it's a great book. It is okay. so good. Um, he goes, as director of Russia's ironically named Moscow Anti-Doping Center, my job was to make sure that hundreds of Russian athletes participating in international events were neither caught with banned substances, such as anabolic steroids or synthetic testosterone, in their bodily fluids during training camps and competition. So that was his job to make sure they were incredible. Incredible. Yeah. But then I was thinking that there are so many other layers to this, like how come Roger Clemens and like Lance Armstrong took federal money from the Postal Service, but he didn't go to jail, but Marion Jones did because she lied. But is that because she's black? Like there's so many different nuances to mm. and who's protecting Lance Armstrong and all of it. Right. So you have to, you really have to like keep it all in your head of like what is going on here. So I don't know, very interesting. And then to think someone like Carolina was so persecuted for saying she didn't know where her boyfriend was. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's what you're saying. It's that, it's that inequality in the application of caring or... I mean, I just think it's so common. But the way yeah. people talk about it, okay? People talk about buying medals for people. I mean, it's all great. Yeah. <laughs> Try to think Elite Trait trains at the Ice House, okay? What is Galit Shape famous for? Her father allegedly bought her a world bronze medal, okay? Right, I hope she enjoyed it. Listen, you can beat him or you can join him, okay? I mean, come on. <laughs> you want to skate for Israel, I would have uh, Galit coach you and her father will send you right there, all right? right? Like, at least know what you're getting into, all right? Right, play the game or don't. I guess. Play the game or don't, don't. okay? Horrifying. Yeah. It's horrifying. But it's the truth, all right? I know, it's... yeah, it's ugly, but it's real. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Yeah, I saw Nikolai Morozov the other day. He was coaching in a leather jacket. He was okay. much thinner than usual. I was like, oh, quar maybe he's been working out in quarantine. I, I don't Before know. I knew the whole story there, I was kind of like, oh, he's not bad looking. But then the more I would learn about him, the more I was like, oh. He has the most interesting accent when he is coaching. It is, mm. it, we need that backstory. It's, um, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, we did get to see some skating um, this week from, well, first, Li um, Lindsay Thorngren, our junior national champion, went to Hershey. There were, I skated with a couple kids that were skating there as well. So a lot of East Coast kids were going to this Hershey competition. And many would just choose to do one program versus two. And I think when we discuss in Colorado, you know, the issues of that. So the interesting thing here, we talk about sport and fairness and unfairness. Jonathan, there are a lot of skaters on the country who skated all during quarantine. There were people in Delaware, the Patriot Center. There were people in um, no, different, maybe North Dakota, Wisconsin area. So all of the Denise Nyers people were training. Raphael's kids were all training on rink four in that rink. Nathan, Mariah, all of them. Okay. So there's a lot of people that have been, oh, and we knew Tom Z was coaching at that um, wealthy skaters house. 
where we saw Vincent. And, and you can't blame them for taking advantage of a situation that is allowed, but is that inherent? Is that any less fair or more unfair than the doping comparisons or athletic ability? I mean, if you happen to know a rich person that has a nice rank, it's like, yeah, use it. It's all yours. I mean, who's to who's to blame them for doing it? I, well. I think if the USFS knows that Alyssa Liu is going to a rink in Delaware, and is that, is Delaware allowing people to skate or are they not allowing people to skate when she's there? And then they're also directing other skaters there. Is that ethical? But are you going to tell me that skaters weren't skating in other countries like China or Russia? Like, again, are people skating the same hours? No. But when you look at the skaters in competition, you had that months long break versus skaters who don't, there is a big difference in the speed. Right comfortability on the ice i mean you look at vincent and i was like wow he really looks better but i'm like i was also skated all during quarantine every freaking day right. and that shows you what kind of work people can get done in that his jumps looked higher in certain certain 100 percent. i will get into it but i was yeah. i was very impressed by what we saw i mean he still had some under rotations but so i was thought Lindsay, for someone who didn't skate during quarantine was very strong uh um, this was the shaharasad program yes the samson and delilah a Samson and Delilah program, excuse yeah. me, yes. But she's, she, you know, she's junior national champion moving to senior in the U.S. But you could tell she's someone who didn't skate during quarantine but has her jumps back but doesn't have the same speed yet as the other competitors who were gone. And you think when you take someone off for that many months, there's a real learning curve to get back, to get the stamina back, to get everything back to normal. So when we watch these Russian test skates, the juniors, and then we watch the, like, you have to have a side eye for that at all moments to be like, right. okay, who was skating during quarantine and who wasn't? Okay. Well, and I'm really glad you said that because I didn't necessarily know what her situation was, but I was obviously watching and thinking, okay, it looks slow. It looks, mm -hmm. it's a little out of shape. It looks a little yeah. under rotated. It looks a yes. little, song, you know, but that is completely justified by what you're saying. I was going to have you walk me through it because I found it. Is it, now she's going senior this year? Yeah, for nationals, she's senior. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was trying to discern because it wasn't um, a skate that I mm -hmm. was necessarily really enjoying. But, but knowing that it's in earlier, early stages than someone like Vincent. She's, yeah. And she's someone who's definitely more of a technical skater and working on the artistic side. So I think they're trying to pick this music to bring it out of her. So mm. I know that she does work with Nina. I'm sure Nina is on her about this, like all day, every day. Um, but she definitely, you could look at the jumps and I was like, okay, that's a really good triple loop. Okay, that's a really good. The triple loop was uh, the best. It, it, yeah. yeah. And then you look at it and you're like, okay, you put someone, give them six months of training, like where they could go because you know, we are at the point in the U.S. where you have to start looking at, okay, Brady and Mariah are getting long in the tooth for their career, like two, three years, or 2022, 2023, who's going to be around, right? Ting, injured, not injured, but hopefully healthy. Hannah Harrell, injured, injured, not healthy, you know, whatever. So you start to look and you're like, we need depth in the U.S. to get to the next level, to push, to be competitive. So you're like, we really need like a saw, strong group of 10 girls to be pushing each other. So that's someone who's definitely going to be moving it up there because we haven't had that strong. We've had maybe four girls every year that are in the conversation for national. It's, like it's that five, six, seven, eight that's tough. It's the girls that are five, six, seven, eight who in a other country would be 12. And then everyone's like, no, but I think she's really good. And you're like, how good? we need strong competitors. And I know that Denise Myers has about three, four girls that are also improving and getting better. Um, so it'll be interesting because they're now going to have the USFS that's going to have like a qualifying system and that's to get everyone competing. And I think it probably helps some of these clubs and, and yada, yada. But to have the system before nationals that it's kind of their workaround with quarantine. So I think we're going to start to see more of these skaters at local smaller competitions that don't look like a sectionals maybe, but you're going to see them to get to nationals. I think we're going to see more of these competitors. And I think that they're ones to really start to pay attention to, because I think you have to look at like, who is going to replace Brady and Mariah or who is going to right. push them. And I think that's a really important thing. And 
what do they need to work on to become stars? You know, because I don't think that putting all of the U.S.'s hopes in Alyssa Liu is wise um, at all. Regardless of who that is. Regardless of, of who it is. One basket yeah. is never the, the right way to yeah. approach it as a federation, I would think. Yeah. yeah. And we were looking at, um, we couldn't find any videos online yet of the women or the ladies. No, but Karen from, did a good short. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the, like, there was Audrey Lynn. Audrey Lynn, and, wait, 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 you were going to mess up the names. It's I know. Like, was so, it Audrey and Ashley Lynn? It's, okay. It's Audrey Shin and Ashley Lynn, okay? Okay. What okay. Is her, and then Pooja competed. Now, Pooja has been- I always on, found so musical back in the day. Now, she's, inter she's interesting. She's worked with so many coaches. She worked with Frank as a young kid. She worked with Alex Arashev. And now she's working with Tom Z. Those are three technical coaches, right? So she's worked with a lot of the same people. I think Pooja was from Arkansas originally. If you're going to like, she is, it's interesting because she, I saw Pooja compete when she was very, very young at nationals in Boston. When she was in 2014, I went with Ann Jensen because, you know, she's Frank's assistant. We went to go watch Tessa Hong skate and everyone wanted to, all the gays wanted to go see Tessa Hong. I think like Jed Hopkins was there watching. Like everyone was like, okay, okay here's like the, the, new, the new thing, right? Like all like the people in the know were like watching in this, and Pooja was there. And I just, re I remember her because she stood out in, in the fact is that I think she had a single axle and all the other girls had double axles at that mm. point. And I don't know if she was a year younger or what happened, but all the other girls that were in that competition have fallen off, have not continued. And she's kept skating, you know, and improved steadily. As Because I a remember lot of her from um, San Jose in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it, she really made a, an impact mm -hmm. when she skated. Like she was one of the ones you talked about, maybe even more so than some of the people that placed ahead of her. Mm -hmm. Th there was such a discussion. It, it always garnered interest, I thought, yeah. for skating. But so, again, couldn't find the videos, but according to the protocols, maybe this wasn't such a, a hot event. No, that's her. interesting because she's been having the black mark of Tom Z, you know, of, of, but he uses her in every video to show his double axle jumping drills and his triple, whatever. I'm sure she is just his poster kid for, he, look, he needs a top skater and he needs a top he, That's the up and comer he has. Yeah. Tom markets better than anyone. The fact that Tom Z and Corey Aid are now working together on her, the, I, the comedy of that is not lost on me. Okay, that is hysterical, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're going back to the days of Jason Brown and Max Aaron and that animosity between the coaching when Corey was moving to Colorado and all of it. So anyway, interesting to watch him with Pooja because I'm sure he wanted her to make a splash at this moment. But again, this is Tom Z's um, presentation, training ability. Uh, gamesmanship versus someone else because he's always trying to impress Mitch Moyer. But do you think someone's going to be impressed about someone does two programs and they're both kind of haphazard or one really great program? This is the thing where people don't understand the gamesmanship of the sport. I think it's ridiculous that so many of these kids in Colorado did two programs and they're trying to get the attention of U.S. figure skating. And maybe U.S. figure skating is telling them to do two programs. I have to tell you, I would never trust anyone when they, if you do one program and it's fabulous, rather than doing like a good short in a week long, you know, everyone, people on the internet, other coaches, they are going to look at that protocol and spread. Well, look at how weak she did there in Colorado. Why are you going to send her to a Grand Prix? Why are you going to give her that assignment? That's how this works. This, well, they're literally going for quantity over quality, which is, yeah. if that's not a metaphor for sort of the bigger issue with some of these people, I don't know what is. You know, it's always been quantity for him, whether amount of jumps, whether amount of competitions, now amount of programs. Like, yeah. I would so much rather a high quality moment. I would rather see Pooja do a short program with a triple triple, fabulous choreography. I mean, this is Tom C. Grant granted right and like <laughs> fast skating skills and a really good package tomsey is really like a technician who needs to be working under someone who has a clue about artistry he's not meant to be a head coach this is what is 
Well, and then if she had done that clean short or an exciting short that got us like really interested, now we're all waiting with great anticipation what the long will bring yeah. instead of seeing two things. More of the same. Yeah. It looks like another skater mid lane, right? But yeah. someone with real talent who you're like, okay, she could be really great, but needs someone sane to be coaching her. So right. you're like, what are the options? I, I don't know. Um, I. I I don't know. Um, but that's interesting because, and even with Vincent, I thought the no, short- Let's talk this out. Let's talk this out. I thought that the short was so good. I think the long was okay. It was, there were some really great moments and he wanted to get the, you want to get the programs out there, but I don't know if it was necessarily in his best interest to do both. The same way I don't think Camden Polkinen should have competed at all. At all. At all. I think well, that... okay, so the first thing's first. So Vincent Short Program, mm -hmm. especially having just judged 2018 with you, mm -hmm. I have to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. Because I, I see now going back to 2018 that although he doesn't have many of the gifts others seem to have been given naturally, I think he takes it seriously. I think he's really trying. I see the a concerted effort being made it, with varying degrees of results in different parts of the program. Mm -hmm. But there were times, times in the short program where he created a really nice body line mm -hmm. where, and that, that quadruple Lutz is mm -hmm. like, was almost no question. Now, a couple of other jumps yeah. I was unsure of, like maybe the toe after it on the short, but that's all right. Like, it's clear that like, he's on a trajectory and it's getting more palatable, the, I mean, the programs and the skating skills. I will, like, I did want to vomit and I did blame you for the fact that he was using Starry Starry Night and how many times you freaking <laughs> loved that gill, uh, oh my God, that Piper and Paul program. I just wanted to vomit, okay? You know, people yeah. are gonna use that all the because time now. It, because they think they're gonna have the same effect. And it's like, right. make your own, make, you can pick one yourself that you identify with. I mean, he's great. a derivative artist anyway, but I will say, yeah. I saw more pointed toe. I saw more upper body work. I, saw, I mean, he still looks down a lot and it's a little noodly, as someone would say. I, I think that I saw a much bigger attention to commitment to choreography and detail. I'm curious how he got the programs. Did Lori do it over Zoom? Because Lori is in Canada. He is in Colorado. So I just, he was preparing for Worlds. He wouldn't have had time to get new programs. So I'm just curious how that all came about. It was facilitated, yeah. Yeah, but it, it looked really interesting. I don't know for a hundred percent that Lori did them, but I would think that she certainly had input. She's certainly guiding him. And I wonder at which point is Vincent going to go to Toronto and what is the, the gamesmanship? Because Jason Brown was able to get into Canada. He theoretically- On his second Toronto. attempt, they said, yeah. Right. But, and so did Caitlin Hawaiak. Now, and John Luke Baker. Now they would have had to quarantine or be I mean, yeah, so my friends that went to Canada, so they were supposed, they had to be in, in their house, like they know like Canadian, house arrest for 14 days. I know Canadians take that more seriously, or at least would shame you to the yin yang if you didn't follow that. So, um, well, because they check on you. If he had flown do. in, they have the right to call you and drop by the house and be like, yeah. how's your quarantine? Yeah. Right. So. I don't know if that's why someone like Vincent is staying in the U.S. because they don't want to lose two weeks of training. Because my understanding is that Alyssa Liu is still in California, even though she is supposed to be going to that same rink in Toronto as Vincent So, So I think that's interesting, like at what point, and you know Tom, you know Tom is just trying to get him to stay in Colorado, working it every day. Of course. Every frick, we know Tom. So that's... Yeah. But I have to say, there were some jump improvements. like almost his like height delay, you know, actually what was sort of a detriment to Karen Jen's triple lots. He almost has that in a beautiful way in his quad lots, this kind of delay. It looks like they're trying to get it higher to make sure he gets the rotation. But some of the other yeah. jumps like that Sal still is dicey for him. Better but... in the short, but definitely on the free skate mm -hmm. was, was pretty clearly under. Even the three jump combo at the end, you could tell the technique. And that's when he got really forward yeah. as well. And that's when old Vincent kind of came out, in my opinion. And he fell on the step sequence in... Um, 
Oh my yeah, god, he was he was about to have like his big choreographic sequence moment and just went down. That was and that was the part I was kind of most interested in seeing because I felt like so much can be determined about his skating skills development. But I was like, well, now I missed it. Well, it was... But promising, the promising program, the music for the free kind of stark in the beginning, just kind of setting a mood for the first half. But I think could be effective for him. Yeah. He is doing a Josh Groban cover of Starry Starry Night. I always think of you when Josh skates. Uh, Josh, uh, I think they're sing. a good pair. I think they're a good pair. What is Josh doing? He doesn't seem to sing as much. What's what's like? How is he making his money? Is he I on know. Broadway? And, and then he got to be in a Muppet movie. I was like, oh my gosh, Josh. Oh my dead. God, you you probably have Adam Rippon issues with Josh Groban as well for the Muppet movie alone. Uh, for the Muppet movie alone. <laughs> What's he doing? But what is he doing now? I don't. Is he? What does he do with his? He doesn't put out those songs as much. There's no. no it's not going it's kind of like that era has passed. Yeah. But how does he make his money? He's making it somehow. Okay. I think he's made plenty along the way. Maybe he's just invested wisely. Please. I th- yeah, I think he did. No. No, you don't exactly. think like the old ladies would like come out for his concerts? Or... Of course, they would come out for his concerts. Yeah, but I would keep doing them to keep making the money. Of know. course, but what is he, how is he keeping it fresh? And I, I haven't yeah. followed his career, you know, this is... Yeah. Funny that. <laughs> is, he a, is he like on a voice show? Is he... Like, is Kelly Clarkson ever going to get in the, and sing again? You know, she's got this massive audience with her talk show and things. She could put on an album. Clive could get her behind the... And I enjoyed her. I always thought she was great. Kelly. Look, Clive is so brilliant, right? How come Jennifer Hudson is thought of as like, one of the biggest talents of our time cannot have a hit single slash record for the life of her, right? Literally, Jennifer Hudson's special is someone dies, she performs at their memorial service and or Academy Awards slash Grammys, and we all love Jennifer Hudson, and then she comes out with an album and we all just ignore it, right? You know why it is, Dave? I think some of it's the repertoire. I think she's, she shines in repertoire that's musical theater based or less sort of like a single album kind well, of Well, get idea. her a better writer and get her that. You can't, t- Clive. Let her do that. Let her just do that. And I am telling you, like that, give her that genre of music and we will buy that album. They're always I saying it Jennifer doesn't have holidays. a space on the radio. But I'm like, but if someone has amazing talent, the radio kind of will then change to them rather than right. have her working with like Neo and have her be trying to do no, like- No, let her be her and be her own thing that we all love. Don't try to change her it's like a skating conversation so the greatest More thing happened to clive movie. was that aretha died so then he could put jennifer hudson in a movie and now she's going to have like a second dream girls where she's just going to be aretha and i'm sure at like two-thirds of the movie she'll sing respect and everyone will be like oh, i love jennifer hudson again give her another oscar yeah. Okay. yeah after oprah shamed her remember all that that w- well, she left the Oprah show. That wasn't very smart, Jennifer, to go to a party yeah. for a private gig, right? Yeah. That was the greatest episode of uh, behind the scenes of season twenty-five of Oprah. That was television, okay? Yeah. The shaming, the shaming. Oprah, who's like friends with every po- like problematic um, person that gets like canceled. Anyway, it's just fascinating. But yes, Jennifer Hudson is that respect. I'm. I, I feel like I've already seen the movie. You know. <laughs> You have a Risa, see you have her yeah. sisters, you have the father who is a preacher. I'm sure there's like her singing around the house. Of course I'm gonna see it. Of now course. the real story there, of course, Aretha Franklin had no will. I know. She had no paper. So I was like, well, she just gave it to all the lawyers, basically. Terrible. Shame on Aretha. That's when I'm disappointed with Aretha. It's okay. It is okay, Jonathan. I just she gave Jennifer Hudson this starring role. Apparently she handpicked her. That's the the that's Clive's you know yeah moment mm-hmm. yeah passing of a baton that he created <laughs> yes it's all okay. great i support it i watched his documentary i watched the david foster i rewatched the jennifer hudson trailer for this i was thinking about it josh groban was singing he was in those documentaries and i was thinking about it all okay i was like all right these people just need someone to boss them around so handlers if you will handlers yes yeah. um just like skating so in gymnastics i have to say like it has been a week. Yeah. It has been a real week for people. People, gays with a lot of emotions have been messaging me up the wazoo. Okay. Because you know, gays of a certain age grew up loving Kim Zemeskel. I grew up loving Kim Zemeskel. Even I did, and I, you know, am so on the periphery. The three whip backs to the double back to the in the mood, right. 
we're all heartbroken about the out of bounds in Barcelona. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, there have been a lot of accusations that she's a problematic slash abusive, however you want to define it, right? The internet is canceling her in spades. And I have complete empathy for the gymnasts, but you know, the gym turned out so young. I don't think that they fully get mm. the history here. But especially with other research that I'm doing with Jenny and other things, I had like chills when I did it. And not just for the girls, the individual cases and their abuse, which I have tremendous empathy for and feel for them. And think it's horrible. And I think that everyone deserves a positive place to train and, and whatnot. Of course. But I had shivers because Kim Zemeskel was always written about in so many articles, in Little Girls in Pretty Boxes. They talked about her in heavy metals. They talked about different things that happened to her. And there's always, these pieces always have this big rhetorical question to, and an overlark to be like, what is the long-term effects of this? What is the lasting effects? And it seems that everyone just said, Larry Nasser, and everyone's like, oh, terrible, throw him in jail forever. How dare you? And wants to go after USAG. Which is, I mean, they sh should, I'm not saying that they shouldn't, but it's so much bigger than that. Like he is just one of the consequences of this. I think it's what we're seeing. Because if you look at it, Kim, her entire career, since, since she was like in kindergarten, was at the Carolis gym. And you read about all the people she would have grown up with and that, kinds of abuse she would have seen and the kinds of people he would have seen him suck the life out of and like what happens to their careers and things like that and you start to realize like oh my goodness like the darkness of all of this like there was this girl in little girls in pretty boxes whose father used to hit her and she used to beat kim in competition and then you're like okay so that one went aside think about all of this stuff that this kim witnessed growing up and experienced herself. There's all With these zero of... backlash. That, and yes. You know, now there's so much publicity about you don't accept that. That is not allowed. You are, you absolutely say something. She grew up in a world where she was literally told, just keep going. She had a very injured wrist. Bella blamed it on her mind, said that she got fat and caused her own injury. Meanwhile, he's like also an expert of overtraining and sucking the will and the life out of people. So, you know, there's that, right? right? Like, <laughs> where's the truth there? But you think of like all the horrible stuff that happened to her, but she also grew up in the era where someone like Kim or Shannon Miller will never say anything bad about gymnastics. They paint it as a very rosy picture so that they can still do their speaking engagements and it's like a Miss America thing. And there's something about Kim where she's, well, both of them. It's like, Kim is very nice. But it just seems like that part of her has like walled off, like all of the stuff that she experienced. She got married at the Caroli Ranch, Jonathan, okay? And also, she didn't even go to real high school. They went to this school that just would sign the papers for the Carolis in Texas so that as long as they took their religion classes, okay? Th they would be at the ranch year round. She went from there, she didn't like go to college and get a degree. She went from there to Mary Lee Tracy and then came, because she was trying to come back for years and it didn't work and he was bad to her. Then she goes to Mary Lee and she learns that, oh, you just be more friendly to the public and train people whichever, which way you want to, but look a certain Give way. Give them the show. Yeah. The show. And then she became a coach. So there's no distance. There's no perspective. There's she no... was never able to zoom out. No. Yeah. Even some of the skaters, like at least they go on Holiday on Ice or Disney and they like drink for a couple of years and they come back and maybe hopefully go to therapy and then come like there's been no distance and like so many people she trained with have like spoken about things that happened to them she didn't necessarily fill fulfill her ultimate goal bella broke her before the olympics but she, and she'll just say that her biggest regret is that she didn't get to compete her upgrades in barcelona yeah because he broke you in half right right and you kind of think of like the damage that that would have so that when she becomes a coach and is potentially being abusive to others and is still trying to please then Marta Caroli, who is apparently really rough on her as a coach and told her that she wasn't that good of a coach, maybe not that smart, which the girl didn't have an education ever. So how is she going to be brilliant and 
<laughs> she was taught to be subservient. She wasn't taught right. to be a critical thinker. Okay. Right. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Like, no wonder she's an average coach with a lot of kids who don't really make it and is repeating a cycle. Like, of course, this is. Right. Like, well, that doesn't excuse what she did. Like, I'm not saying that that excused right. what she did. I'm giving the cause and effect of all of this and what it, because you know what? Now her gymnast could then again repeat the next cycle. So right. there's a whole thing. I really think until she's completely honest about what happened in her career, I don't know that I would send kids to her. Because I feel like until you start to make sense and deal with things, and I've heard that she's been therapy for certain things. You know, people have talked about that for things with the Corollis. Until you get to that point, I don't think that you... How could you be? Yeah. I, a lot I of mean, skating coaches where I wouldn't want to be trained by the kids of one of them, you know? Right, right. Well, and again, perpetuating, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's part of the good thing is that lineage. But if that lineage is toxic, that's what you're passing down. Yeah. It's really, it's really terrible. I mean, not to make it sound trite, there was a very fascinating Law & Order SVU episode mm -hmm. about um, a piano teacher who abused a student and then the student became someone who also taught and abused, even though they yeah. probably wouldn't have otherwise, but it's this, it's just this concept of passing down that kind of toxicity. It's devastating. Yeah. And I think that there's like so much like black, white, and like, yes, this is, but I think that when you, you can have empathy for the child in that person who is abused and then have a complete unacceptance for what they're doing as an adult. Right. But again, this is that whole, they're not trained. It's, to do it's systemic. Else. Yeah. They're not trained to do anything else besides teach cartwheels if they didn't go to school and learn anything. What are you going right. to do? Well, and it reminds me actually of how- At least the I... is learning to be a TV host. At... Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, good morning, Russia. <laughs> yes. Um, but it makes me think of that Svetlana Horkina article oh, yes. that we read also because she's sort she of like- She really seems healthy. Yeah, she, but, and, and of that ideology, like what's the problem? Yeah, they do that. They do that for everybody. And then we all win. So. What's, why are you complaining? And it was just sort of a perfect visual aid, that whole article to, to how this can be problematically passed out. Yeah, so, so. it's dark, it's, it's depressing, but it's, it's just interesting to me because there's so much in Kim's career. You know, when, when Kim was uh, 16, she, there was a girl she trained with that she grew up with her whole, like for six, seven, eight years, named Erica Stokes. And Erica Stokes revealed that she was bulimic and it was like why she was retiring. And Kim said, I know Erica, she's not bulimic. To the press, as a 16 year old, said that. And you think, and you're like, whether Kim, whether the Corollis told her to say that or not, she was trained as a gymnast to one, be a killer, two, say everything deny. is fine and deny yeah. and do that. Whether they told her explicitly or implicitly, that was uh, their trait. That's, that's growing up with them in that environment for years, to, right? And then when Dominic Mochiano made her comeback and, the, and Marta found every which way to make it not happen, Kim wasn't even there when she competed or at the training camp, but she got Kim to vote the way she wanted to deny Dominic's petition. And that's the one she also grew up with. So there's like, so much Stockholm syndrome that's like, <laughs> hello, like right in. Yeah. Right. And apparently Dominique told her off, like went right up to her, which is I think yeah. why we love Dominique much. Yeah, for the queen. She yeah, just be kind of transcends all of those roles. Yeah. yeah. But I just thought it's fascinating with all of the different things that come out. You're like, cause we, we still heavy metals, athlete A, you know, people are like, is it all worth it? What are the big questions? And then you turn around and you're like, well, then that person's coaching and does. That's a part thing. of the equation, 100%. Yeah. So I, to me, that's why I got chills as someone who grew up with right. watching this and reading these books and uh, experiencing that. So I, I don't know anyone else's take on Kim Zemeskel, but I thought like, of course, like her best friend was Betty Aquino and she's, <laughs> Bella's telling her that she's just lazy and didn't work hard enough and that's why she got and they injured. believe it and they believe it and they believe that that talk ultimately yields results it's yeah it's a horrifying cycle to break but already we see as it's happening with kim as a coach mm -hmm. the athletes of today know that they can say something 
they are able to reject that kind of behavior. So I hope that all of this exposure, one, is horrifying to really like pick up the stone and really see what's going on underneath all of it. Oh my God, there's so many political things like in the middle. So Reagan Smith was Kim's athlete. She's the one that she would give beads to on TV when she had a good attitude for performance, when she was like 15, 16. Again, horrifying, right? That like you would treat someone like they're nine when they're right. on national Or television. like a dog and give them a treat right. for doing good, yeah horrifying right and andrea joyce is holding the thing of beads as if like it's this like wonderful andrea joyce also hosted like a docu hbo documentary on kim zameskel back in the day but anyway there's like this whole like so they're giving her beads she writes now her mom was a gymnast and i believe like some of the parents are friendly with kim so she defended kim now it's really interesting she would have been crucified anyway because the, the, the gymnastics internet community is way more far along than skating in terms of going against the abuse. Skating is still mm. at like a Terry wins. What are you talking about? Sure. Yeah, total right? denial. It's total skating. denial, total. right? Yeah. They're like so far in, right? The gymnastics is like having this, you know, reckoning of everything going on. It's spread to Australia, it's spread to the Great Britain, it's spread to, you know, Canada. And so Reagan wants to defend her coaches as someone who was raised and broken by them at the same time. And, but she, again, these people, not very bright, never, and she's getting the beads on TV. I'm not thinking she's a scholar, right? Right. So she, you know, like when people do a bad apology and they're like, um, I'm sorry if you're upset, rather than I'm yeah. sorry if I upset you, right? Like yeah, there's, a, there's exactly. a nuance there that is very, very clear <laughs> so she used the word you know people may have other feelings but i had a good experience now feelings is it's different than an experience it's, feelings implies that someone who got their braids cut off by kim was maybe just so sensitive you know rather than, instead of having that experience happen to you having that feeling happen to you having that experience right may the comment section of that was like a, a page turner reading through. Mm. Someone sent it to me. And at one point, KJ Kindler, who coaches her in college, liked the post. Then she was shamed into unliking the post. The, I mean, the unbelievable, the stuff that is going on on the gymnastics internet right now. But then you look at skating and we're giving awards to a Terry, so. I Hundred percent, and you saw Nikolai just coaching. It was willy great. nilly, yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's, everything's fine. fine. Okay. Yeah. And you wonder what the fear is. Like, does that exposure like um, prevent people from becoming involved in the sport? Is that the concern here? So it has to stay sunny and smiley, so everyone still wants to do it. I mean, I was speaking to someone that was talking about twenty nineteen governing council in the U.S. and. Skating is so far in the denial factor, it is just like stark, like bone chilling. You know? and, and I remember how, how just idiotic some comments were, because I remember someone was discussing Johnny Weir and they're like, this is a famous Olympic skater that was like, well, you know, we have to be careful with these very out gay skaters because it may discourage um, other people from letting their sons skate mm. because of Johnny Weir. And I was like, I don't see that connection. <laughs> I don't understand why. There are a lot of people who believe that in skating. Yeah, I think that's that's dark. That's been a, a view for that's a long dark. time in skating. Yeah. So backwards. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. We saw Plashenko choreographing this week. That was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> I wouldn't trust him to choreograph. But I do think he can bring some expression out of people. You know I where he can help your PCS mark? Performance. He can give you performance points. May, I, I, I don't way. recommend doing it exactly the way he's telling you to do with his hair and the pomp and the thing. But I do believe um, it, that he is... Um, Performative. Performative, telling you to look at that judge. and do Projection. I think there's something to it. Because as we've judged him a couple times now on Patreon, mm -hmm. there's something alluring about it. It's not the steps, because the steps are bad. Mm -hmm. But the way he does the steps with such confidence, and as if he's giving you 
the most profound choreography that ever existed is a talent. Yeah, it, it could it could be very beneficial to someone like Trusova. Right, it's to so, basically help someone fake it. Listen, I think. He, did you notice also? There's so many like little mini micro shady things going on. Did you realize they had Veronica Gilina doing that Nina Bauer forever and the spiral sequence? Like they are molding her into a very yeah. specific talent. I really think that she is the one that got away from the Terry. If they can steal one or two more of them, Diploshenko's rank, that's the that's game. That's where the real shift will happen. Yeah. Yes. These girls are on the way out, Jonathan, and no one's going to give Plushenko credit right. for them. Besides, right. there's always going to be, well, they were developed by someone else. You take Jelena and you make her a star, that is impressive to me, right? And that's what I think that they are going to, look at the work they're putting into her to make her, yeah. and the focus. In the way Terry's, a, a Terry's um, sort of golden goose, or the goose that lays the golden egg, it's going to be Valgeva. Not and the Katieva. Sherbakova. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's that one, like you're talking about in the US, you've got to look to that, mm -hmm. that section right beneath the now. I know, yeah. but we have to look at the, what's so things to me about the US, and we skipped over them probably for a reason, but there are so many boys in the US, and I know boys mature later, but you look at Camden and you look at Tomoki. Camden- I didn't mind Tomoki's short program, by the way. They're trying to play him cool. And I was like, this is, I will take this over the material from. Right. Us. However, and I like Tomoki skating. Mm -hmm. I think he's got a lot of talent. <sighs> if you want to be top three in the country, you need to go out there in a freaking costume, look confident, look stretched. He's short. He needs to work on his extension through the fingertips to the toe and extend and give a real performance. He's still fourth placing to Jason Brown, who does yes. one-tenth of the jumps, right? Because Jason maximizes every single point. To me, Tomoki went out. He, when you are competing in a costume, in a competition where other people are wearing costumes and you're just in the black t-shirt and pants, it looks casual. You don't have the same presentation when you go out there. And to me, it just looks like he's another lackadaisical boy not taking it seriously enough. I, see, I, didn't know if they were, I didn't know if they were trying to do this sort of like um, Kurt Browning in 94, like cool guy, black. I think it was. You would have had a belt if you did that. It would have been tucked in. You would have had okay. a finishing look to it to communicate that, that this is intentional. There was yeah. none of that here. It wasn't fitted. Because he was... has a lot of work ahead of him. He has to lobby almost. And you're right, the more... He's been someone stopped. that's been in fourth, fifth place for so many years where we're like, we're, is he going to break through? Is he going to break through consistently? To me, this doesn't communicate that. And I think that Christy Crawl is a great jump technician, but how come her skaters have never been doing are never the ones that do the run-throughs that have the consistency. We see glimpses of the most beautiful technique, but throughout her entire career, with all that Christy Kral has done and how political she is and the fact that she even like helped invent moves in the field in the US, how come her skaters don't cross that finish line? Right. How come it was like the Angela Wang and Agnes show where you get to the third jumping pass, they step out of the loop and then the rest of the program is crap. And right. that to me is Christy Kral. Yes, she worked with Patrick, but Patrick took from every freaking coach with that mother, you know, right. directing his career when it was hot. And then when it was not, it was real bad. But right. to get him to where he needed to be, there were a lot of ingredients with Patrick. But her skaters, when we see them by themselves, they have some of the most beautiful technique with no training. <laughs> In isolation, yeah. It's yes. And it doesn't change from skater to skater to skater. So we see Tomoki do a short program, but he doesn't have the finishing package to put behind it. And, and quite, quite frankly, like you make the change. Where is the reason for us to reassess your placement as mm -hmm. the fourth guy? It, you need to give us a reason, a new element, a new style, a new something. I actually thought Camden, Polkin, and Spins looked a, li li looked a little bit better, but he had two falls and a pop. And again, it just looked- and bad falls. Like, I mean, I'll tell you, the one that we fell forward on was like torso with the arm. They really need to figure out what is going on there. Do you want to skate? Do you want to do it? Do you not want to do it? If you don't want to do it, do something else. Go to college. Do, you know- Or even just take a go. break. Take a break and see if you miss it or if you don't. 
But there's a real disconnect happening there because he's such a beautiful skater and he feels it. One of the most talented. All of the ingredients are there. But it's clear that until he really decides to do it for himself and whatever that next maturity or drive or thing is, you're wasting everyone's time. Your own, years of your life, uh, development. It does not look like... Resources. To see, it's just very frustrating to see Torgashev, Polkinen, Tomoki, year after year, they are in like the five, six, seven, you know, six, seven, eight, right. four, five, six. And it's still in the middle. And they all have talent. And it's like they need to decide to do it. And it doesn't look like they're there. I think it's what, very frustrating. Like, to quote, to quote ISU coach of all time, Terry, this is this is a hundred percent her thing about not wanting to work with some men. Mm. She's like, they just don't push as hard as my girls. And this is sort of that in, in perfect example. These outrageously talented individuals that like you're saying, just kind of allow themselves to middle, whether that's an inherent belief that they don't think they can do anything but be in the middle. Maybe there's like that lack of, I could get there if I really do this, but they're just not doing it. I don't know. It's, but they're all friends with each other, and it, we see. Like, so it's all normal to do this. Yeah, it normalizes it to know. What but I think it's interesting is that Karen, who dates Camden, seems to be skating more for herself and enjoying it more. At least in the glimpses that we have seen, she did a good short program here. She was good at the Peggy Fleming competition. You know, she at least seems to be. She went to Cornell for a bit on her own. Like she's, she's had so much more life experience now. Yeah. Having gone to the Olympics, having experienced the trauma and backlash about all her boot situation, from going to school. I mean, she's she's propelled herself forward personally, like you're saying, mm-hmm. in ways someone like him spent school, by the way, never did. Mm-hmm. And so she's able to come back with more perspective and more of a point of view that others seem to be really lacking. Yeah. And I also think like some of these people, I've always, like I've met Kim several times, she's always very lovely. I'm not coached by Kim. That doesn't mean that that's not true. Someone can be very lovely, but also (laughs) under stress, act in a way that's messed up. You know, like it's so, and- Any abuser knows how to do that, I would think. Do you know what I mean? That's part of that game. I don't even know if it's conscious with some of these people rather than some kind. I mean, I think there are degrees of it that are conscious. I think that if Kim was a really effective abuser, she would be the Carolis. They were masters at that. They knew how to abuse better than anyone. She seems to be like the C minus who's abusing, but not getting the results she wants, right? Like it's- um, And to what end? Yeah, exactly. She's not a mastermind by any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, it's just interesting to watch all of these things unfold, but I don't know. It's, I it hope was nice to see skating. It was yeah. nice to see skating. We'll see more this week, and I hope that yeah. we'll see more of an improvement from Vincent. I hope that Camden and, and Tomoki will get a costume and really go out there to- Land some jumps. Land some jumps, slip them through the throats. Like, come on, boys, you can do it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. these, these boys have so much talent. And then everyone still, a lot of former skaters will shade Jason because he isn't having the technical content that is kind of expected of this era. And yet has remained more relevant than many people with much more physical talent. Well, some of that is because you see someone like a Daniel Grasso who puts in every quad that they can do in practice, but they can't do them all together in competition. You know, there's a balance to this. And I think Vincent is gonna learn that too with like, okay, you're an under rotator. How much stamina do you really have to do these quads and to rotate them rather than to just do them poorly? And right. that's a balance too, because Tom Z wants to put in every jump that you can do. That way he can stroke his own ego for it. But I think you're going to see that quality with strategic difficulty is really kind of the way to go. And that's that, how Jason- that quad lots triple toe. I mean, that, that has huge potential to be a big scorer with some blessed Yui if he really keeps working at it. That so quad you south want to diminish it from the quad south. It's yeah. always dicey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Jenny and I went there, we watched him circle and pop and under rotate that thing for two sessions. Okay, so incredible. But but again, I'm very hopeful about the improvement he's made, especially putting in perspective by having seen 2018, which really uh, only two years ago, it was basically an unrecognizable skater. I mean, it's he's definitely more in the conversation, but I think you're still running behind Nathan, Hanyu, Shoma. Right? Like oh, of course, of course. But I think he's solidly reminded us he can be top six. Yes. 
Also, once again, we have all the words of wisdom from Moscovina. They were asking her like, you know, what if the Olympics are canceled and what, and she was like, she goes, well, she, so they, they asked her like, do current, effects, uh, do current events affect the Olympic prospects? The results become unpredictable and there's no certainty that the Olympics will be held. And she goes, if it does, so what? It's no big deal. Who expected the appearance of telephones, satellites, Skype, but it happened and we adapted. Even if the Olympics won't take place, it's not a disaster. There have been boycotts and cancellations of the Olympics. No one will die because of the cancellation itself. Let's say 150 skaters are interested in the Olympics. And out of billions of people living on the planet, tens of millions will ask, what is figure skating? <laughs> and the Olympics will continue to exist forever. Boykova and Kozlovsky, for example, have not participated in the Olympics yet. Well, it means they'll participate later. If the Olympics in Beijing are destined to be canceled or postponed. For the sports journalism industry, it'll probably be more difficult. There'll be nothing to write about. <laughs> What a queen. And yet okay. here we are. <laughs> here we are, but she gets it, Jonathan. Okay. She does get it. She has all of that perspective and uh, point of view that we see lacking in so many others. This is a woman who totally has perspective. It's why she's been effective for more than 40 years. Okay. Exactly. That she's still churning out hair steam that turn our head. And she's not on Instagram like Tom Z, promoting every time. Doesn't need to be. Hmm. <laughs> Older nature looks sexy, everyone. Bye.